Well, welcome to the program of the Pan-African Friday, this Friday. In this episode, we'll also continue looking at issues and um, the challenges that face the African continent and its people. In the studio today, as usual, we are the three uh, people, uh, including the the missed man. Now he's no longer missing, he's back in action and Sister Tagali, who will be um, uh, discussing issues that concern uh, the continent of Africa. Note that we, we know it all. I know there's a lot that we also learn as we discuss, but more so we also learn from you, our viewers, who um, sometimes make contributions on the issues that definitely affect um, this continent of Africa. Kampala is good, say good morning here. My name is James Mututa, and as you'll be following us, we'll be um, hearing more from other people, including those maybe, if uh, time allows, who will not be in the studio, but will be uh, making their contributions. Today, we'll be looking at the Africa continental free trade area. This is a subject that we looked at um, last week, but for those who are with us last week, could remember that in the middle we had the interruption of the, uh, the FIFA program, uh, which the minister launched from the media center in Kampala, where UBC will be uh, relaying live um, the programs and activities that will be uh, the f f uh, FIFA activities that will be taking place in Katam. And I think for soccer lovers, that will also be a very good time to relax as you watch uh, UBC. So today we will continue with that um, topic to look at the what the uh, Africa free trade area uh, brings uh, to the continent and the benefits, but also the challenges that uh, come with that. But before we do that, we'll also look at how the week has been, I think, for those who are in the studio now. And with the, me, like I said, I will begin with Ndugu Rugarama with what events and issues that he um, may have um, captured in the week um, concerning this continent of Africa. Ndugu Garama. Good morning uh, to you, our dear viewers. Uh, good morning, uh, Sister Rachel and uh, uh, Comrade uh, Mututa. The week uh, I witnessed uh, the appointment there was an elevation of uh, judges from the uh, Court of Appeal to Supreme Court. Then there was uh, the appointment of uh, uh, Comrade uh, Oscar Chika. We, we all know him, the lawyer for NRM, to uh, Court of Appeal. Now that caught my attention. Uh, for many Court reasons. Attention because he is a lawyer mm. for NRM or? Uh, at the risk of taking a lot of time going into that, <laughs> let me simply say I had, uh, I'm very happy for our senior brother, uh, Oscar Chika. I want to believe uh, that uh, he has what it takes of course. To, to sit there. And uh, I am very hopeful that he's going to add to the delivery of uh, the badly needed justice in this uh, country. Sure. We have also witnessed uh, uh, the decline of the hitherto feared uh, Ebola uh, outbreak. The, the, the reports which are coming from the ministry uh, are not so much uh, uh, scaring. Uh, then, uh, of course, we at the same time had uh, the president address the nation. But what is maybe of uh, the global scale is um, the double standards being uh, exhibited by the powers, the Western powers, which were claiming that uh, the use of uh, fuels, of, uh, fuels uh, coal and other related uh, materials 
is a very big uh, environmental hazard. And this time around, I see them doing a lot of uh, eating their own uh, words by going back to the same uh, materials to produce uh, badly needed energy. And yet, they are, were claiming some time back that uh, we need to adopt a cleaner way of generating uh, energy and running the economy, and uh, that uh, the developing uh, countries, especially in on the, on the African continent and uh, others which are not yet in their first world, uh, we are making a very big mistake and they should be rained on and uh, brought to order because uh, they are polluting the, the environment. But here they are uh, doing the same things they have been condemning uh, in the not far uh, away. And Actually, um, the, they may not be doing the same things. They may be doing worse things. Even I mean, worse. if you compared uh, Uganda um, mm. producing, I mean, oil, oil pipeline coming from, from, from Uganda to, 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 to Tanzania, and, uh, and the, uh, Europe are going back to coal, I, I, the, the effects are not the same. They, they are producing worse effects to the environment than we could. The, 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 like I said, of course, uh, when you look at some of these things, then you realize the double standards and the hypocrisy that we have always talked about. But of course, we are in a world where the big brothers have got a big say and uh, their word is taken for gospel truth. But uh, the fact of the matter in this particular case is that uh, the miscalculation that was uh, conceived by the NATO members in uh, making sure that uh, they attempt to fuel antagonism between uh, Ukraine and, and, and Russia is paying dividends. And uh, I, I don't think that uh, one party is liking what uh, they are going through. But anyway, uh, that has been the week for me. And um, uh, I can't. Uh, talking of which, um, I, I, you know, I have personally have had issues with the, the uh, Pan African Parliament, uh, but also generally the African Union. But for once, I think they, 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 they caught my attention when they came up with a resolution, a counter-resolution to the European resolution, um, uh, countering the, the move by the, the European uh, Parliament to curtail Uganda uh, from uh, doing um, its um, pipeline. And I think for me, I, I thought that, that that was important. And I could, you could tell from the tone that this time the, 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 the Pan-African Parliament was definitely accredited and they said they need to take a, an action on that one. And I think we'll hear um, the motion that was presented by Honorable uh, Court uh, in the Pan-African um, Parliament, if it is possible, if it is it's ready uh, from our producers. But th th you, you do definitely understand understand that I think if we, we looked at issues that concern Africans in a solidified manner like they are doing now, um, may, maybe because it was concerning Uganda, that's why I took interest, but I, I thought and, and I found that um, uh, very uh, interesting. I think we'll hear what uh, 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 Honorable Okot Ogong presented before the, um, uh, the Pan-African uh, Parliament, um, uh, which uh, sat, I think, last week. Well, maybe it's not yet ready, but we'll um, at one point um, uh, uh, have it uh, for, 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 for our viewers. Um, Sister Takali. Yes. How has been your week? Um, the, the week has been okay. And I think for me, one of the things that stood out was uh, Attorney General Chiriwachi Wanuka defending Uganda's human rights records before, you know, <laughs> That's where the woman he addressed before him, wanted to address before him. 
it was uh, one of those things. <laughs> 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 but that aside, uh, the irony of having to defend your record in that capital that is so many miles away. Miles away. Why, why, why would I even? Because sometimes I think, um, um, like uh, the, the, what the, the, the resolution in the Pan-African Parliament, I think they sometimes need to, to be ourselves. You, you, if if I've, I've quarreled with my wife at home, then you call me uh, to go and explain <coughs> how I've quarreled uh, somewhere miles away. We are not saying that um, issues of human rights should be trivialized. True. But I think there's also <coughs> need for that decency and respect of the sovereignty of, of, of the countries, especially in Africa. But that was, in, that was your point anyway. But I think that speaks of uh, how much, how far we have sunken as a society uh, and really stepped many, many steps back from the ideals that uh, we embraced at the colonial, at the end of the colonial era. We thought that by now we would be handling our own issues. But clearly, because uh, these former colonial masters are still very much front and center of our governance issues, and because they are key stakeholders in terms of financing our budgets, they still have a, a key role they play in our day-to-day -day affairs, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, but still the same week, a uh, number of our opposition politicians were in Nairobi uh, before the Kenyan Human Rights Commission, still talking about the same issues, uh, <coughs> talking about, um, I think, sharing their experiences in this political dispensation. But it, it also does not augur well for where Uganda is in terms of addressing its own issues. Um, uh, they, they, what comes across is that these particular actors no longer feel that Uganda is offering them a forum to meaningfully make progress on human rights issues. Whether that is the case or not, that is really how they feel. And so if they are not appealing to the white man, now they are appealing to their neighbors even. And uh, that is not a very healthy place to be. Uh, that aside, um, on the continental scene, uh, Ethiopia has been recently been thumping its chest saying then the number three economy as we, t as we talk on this continent. And uh, they say after Nigeria and South Africa, Ethiopia. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was very interesting. Egypt. Egypt. Okay. Th that's what they say. But in the yeah. later in the program, we'll hear uh, what um, the Secretary General of the of the, um, the continental free uh, trade area talks about the economies of Africa. And he is insisting, and which I also believe, that there is no economy in this, on this continent that can stand alone and claim superiority. But it doesn't, uh, there's no, not even America. Yes. So that is not the issue. The issue is, are the claims what they are? Or what are the true dynamics? Of course, no continent, uh, there is no economy that does not yeah. need others. Mm. Absolutely. But what we are saying is, w if you're thumping your chest in terms of saying you're number three, I don't know whether that is accurate or not, what does that mean? This is a country that has been saying, as of rec recently in their altercation with Egypt, that more than half their population has no access to power. Talk so about water. Talk about... <laughs> so what does that mean? The, anyway, that would be what a I'm trying to say day, is that this week, that for me has brought to the fore what we say we are and what we should be, and, and that's partly, mm. but that's partly why the other people are looking at us as people who are disoriented, disorganized. No wonder they can even call you to their bedroom to go and explain issues that definitely, because really, if you are talking about human rights. Talk about the record of Americans, for example, when it comes to human rights. But we'll call Should them to order. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are not even part and, of ICC. And, and <coughs> even beyond that, I know, and which I also appreciate, that they have built systems over time that can help to mitigate um, certain issues, including um, the positive um, uh, propaganda. Yes, yes. But uh, we, 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 when you come to, 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 to think of it, then you, you realize that... Um, it, it shouldn't be seen, claimed, 
let, let it happen. Let, let also see, uh, like they say uh, in, 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 in journalism, that don't, don't tell, show. No, but the issues of, uh, if I may, just a minute. <coughs> the issues of uh, human rights are very complex in nature. True, we are aware that uh, there are some countries which certainly, historically speaking, have always stamped and uh, uh, walked over the fundamental human rights of their people. And um, regardless of what America says, for instance, they are not, it is not a country that uh, respects the human rights. Uh, of course, it's a big debate, of but course. we all know the civil rights movement, where it has been uh, very powerful, and uh, how the propagators of the same have met their death, and how society, marginalized parts of the American society, have continued to move down the road of marginalization. But at the same time, you will hear a lot of talk of the abuse of human rights on the African continent and other quote-unquote communist countries like in China and other uh, 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 jurisdictions. But there are certain acceptable standards globally, which we know that these ones should be respected. And we know of the so many people who speak good of themselves, and yet we know the story behind the story that actually they are not the, what they say they are. Talking of which, um, I think it was last week, um, when uh, there is a report um, that um, when Bat Patrice Lumumba w w actually was supposed to be eliminated, and that had been agreed uh, by the then president of um, uh, America, that uh, he needed to be eliminated. Of course, there are disagreements within the CIA uh, circles, within the, C the, the, the DOD. Mm. It was uh, a combination of Belgium and CIA exactly. that finally eliminated yeah. him. Now, they brought two um, uh, chemical agents sealed. And these chemical agents were supposed to be administered either in the food of Lumumba or it was supposed to be um, injected in his toothpaste. But the guy who was given these agents didn't act that fast. In a report that the declassified uh, report say that he feared killing Lumumba because he didn't see the reason as to why he should have then killed him. But he said he went and buried these agents um, on the banks of the river, and that was the river Congo. Now, over time, it is also believed that the, those agents were the, the, the part of the, the problems of the Ebola that we're having even now. Uh. And the research is still ongoing, because finally they, 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 they got their, their way into the water, and the fish and the monkey, so that, that, that fish I circle. But that, that a lot, when you talk of the, the human rights, what I'm saying is that are, are we, when you look at some of the things, are, are we not also entitled to our rights? When, if, if we look at the problems that we are going through as a people of, as the continent, are we entirely responsible for some of the problems? Of course not. Now, while that was happening, of course now talking about it, your friend also comes up and makes an announcement that it's going to run in the next election. <laughs> and a lot has happened just from that, that, that announcement alone. First Who is that? Mr. Trump. <laughs> hmm? Mr. Trump. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. Yeah, from that hmm. announcement alone, you now realize that the, 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 the political uh, landscape in the US is, is shifting. First of all, um, uh, and, and I believe to a, a, a greater extent, most of the prominent um, but uh, the Republicans, Republicans have not taken advantage are, of the chaos. Are going, the, the, the Republicans are going to shun him, uh, some of them, because I hear now even his former 
Pres Vice President Pence in his book, uh, which is supposed to come out, I think, in time. The, um, so, so God help me. Also help me, God. Mm. He, he, he may be contributing to already the, 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 the charges that are before court uh, saying that actually the, 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 the former president uh, broke the law as he was a sitting president. But of course, the DOJ also is, is now coming up with more information about the, the mm. documents that the president had also gone with. And you know, if it were in Africa, they would say they are trumping up cases because he made a pronouncement that is going to run or to deter him from running in the next election. We now also um, keep watch to see what happens. Is he going to be prosecuted because he committed crimes or is going to be prosecuted because he made a pronouncement that is going to run for the next election? So, it, it, I mean, it is a matter of time when you see some of these things also turning up to be more that this is not going to be banana republics, but maybe potato republics, whatever uh, may, may, may sound. Because okay, cake republics. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Mututa, there are certain <laughs> things which never happen in some of these so-called uh, utopian democracies. Uh, actually, even on the topic of utopia, mm. the guy said, when in, in his, his pronouncement, said, if elected back into the presidency, he's going to change the constitution, and he will allow time more, there will be no time limits for senators. That's a lie. The, 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 the obstacles towards that are, are impossible, actually. Trust Trump. But Trump is a liar, <laughs> so he's lying as usual. <laughs> but the longer uh, the short, as you said, these things serve to remind us yes. that our answers lie with us. Exactly. These people are just as fallible as we are. Oh, yeah. Because this man, had he been on this continent, he would have been named uh, the, the topmost or the leading dictator, dictator. of all times, exactly. maybe. One who attempted to wrestle every system to the ground. Including the Iranian government. Including <laughs> blackmailing, <laughs> including uh, insulting, all sorts of presidential. Lacking, they would have called him barbaric. Lacking in manners. They would have know? called him barbaric. Mm -hmm. Because I know that this uh, Rishi Sunak, uh, he has recently called uh, Russia's campaign in Ukraine barbaric. Because, of course, it's counter to their interests. But Trump, mm, what we're saying is that at the end of the day, We've spent all these years looking to people who cannot provide us with answers. Exactly. That's really where we are. Sure. Duguru Garama, you are saying something, then you can move on. No, uh, w w the point really uh, uh, I'm making is that uh, there's, there's a lot of hype from the self-acclaimed utopian democracies. They do so much uh, negatively, but because they have got the global media, media and they can package their lies and they repeatedly tell those Propaganda. lies to the Garibo societies in uh, other jurisprudences like uh, ours here. And because it is the only song that has continued to be sung, then it will be taken for gospel truth. Exactly. I will tell you 101% that the people in the democracies like America and uh, Western Europe, uh, they only get rid of you when the system, the very, very system, no longer wants you. Sure. But as long as the very, you are serving the system, the interests of the system, and theirs, you see, the, the kind of dictatorship that we are talking about here in uh, the so-called third world countries is seen in the eyes and the works of an individual. They will say uh, president of country X is a dictator and uh, they are going to list all the items that constitute a dictatorship. But in um, areas in uh, democracies, if you want to call them that, like uh, America, uh, Britain and uh, the, their cousins, it, they are the systems, the multinationals, the corporations, the, the big conglomerates that do business for and on behalf of government in the rest of the world are the ones that dictate terms and they are the ones that they practice the, the, the dictatorship 
and do all sorts of human rights abuses. Sure. So I will give just one example as I conclude. You will find that um, the companies which were working in Venezuela, for instance, the American companies which were taking over 75 percent of the oil industry of Venezuela. When the Maduro uh, leadership uh, came in and they said we need to see how to work the oil of Venezuela should benefit directly the, the people Venezuelan people, Venezuela. people and therefore we are having a policy shift. The immediately the White House that had congratulated uh, Maduro upon his uh, victory and uh, the other uh, progressive uh, high democracies uh, in Western Europe that had congratulated him listed him as a dictator. dictator. They didn't stop there. They engineered a, 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 a subterranean movement within the country, went into subversive activities, created a person who had been defeated, and they themselves declared him a president. They started working with him. They went into the army, had it not been for Cuba, and that is why they re-emphasized sanctions against Cuba, the, the, the embargo against Cuba during the time of uh, uh, the, the, the Trump, simply because Cuba stood with Venezuela to make sure that they insulate the Venezuelan army to resist the temptation of bringing down their own leadership. In other words, dictatorship in the rest of the countries, in the rest of the democracies, is a description and a creation of those who do not benefit from the policies that such a country would be, I can tell you again, finally, that f countries in, on the African continent and other uh, 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 continents which do not fall in the league of the so-called first world uh, countries, or say, call it G7 and then G21, G20. as long as you do not play to the text, the, the, the blueprint as, uh, as, as, as written down and handed by the IMF and the World Bank, they will make sure you are declared a dictator and you will be fought. Policy wise, if they fail to get you there, to bring, down you, to bring you down economically, then they are going to send in their jackals and they will get rid of you. Yeah, like Just think about what happened to, to Egypt. <coughs> Remember the Muslim Brotherhood, they won fair and square. And they had the full mandate of the Egyptian people. Sure. They went ahead to engineer a coup in the names now, now formalized by this man, Mossi. And he has been, no one is talking about the fact that this man overthrew a democracy. Because the other people were elected in. But because they were charting this very path he's talking about, talking about the people of Egypt truly owning their way, their destiny, mm -mm, they were not open. They have now gone on to, to act as if that power grab was really what it should be. The people of Egypt had rejected the former uh, uh, leadership of that man, Hosni, because Hosni is a type of Mosi, former military or current military strongmen who perpetuate the interests of the West. So even the others, they said they were Islamists. They said they were terrorists. But the people of Egypt have said, this is the leadership we want. Even if it is at variance with what you call democracy, wherever you come from, this is our country, this is what we want. Look at what they are doing now in West Africa. The, the, the people who have recently taken power into their own hands saying, look, we are tired of the French influence, we are tired of American uh, nosing our own affairs and so on. They say, oh, those ones are now uh, overthrowing democracy. Really? Is mm. it because they're saying they don't want you to run, to, to take their uranium, it is to take their diamonds? It is democracy as long as they say so. They say, yeah, so eating. these people will never have our interest at heart. But like we have been talking about these things back and forward. That, and I'm like, <clears throat> we maybe don't need to blame them so much because they have um, perfected the art to do so and get away with it. Uh, until such a time that Africans are going to step down and say, come and buy and buy, but we have to move our way. And let's also have the credibility 
even when we are moving our way. Our way shouldn't be um, because a few people are benefiting. Um, I, I, I think it, uh, recently, yesterday also, is when the, the president of Kenya came uh, up to say the issue of the constitutional change, because remember last time we were here, People, there were voices because an MP had moved um, that they needed to move to Parliament and change the constitution to remove the term limits but maintain the age limit. And, 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 and it was uh, 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 an uproar in, in, in Kenya. But uh, whether the, they were testing the waters or whether it was by default, the president now comes to say, no, there will be no way. Could hear the air. Exactly, that the, <laughs> the, the constitution will not be. Um, or is it for now? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that sometimes we need also, even as we agree, because the other issue that we have as, 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 as Africans is that we agree to, to go our way, but even as we go our way, you again hear voices that are coming to the contrary, or we take that and then turn selfish into our pursuit for, uh, for, for, for to be able to, for the things that we want to achieve. But if we did that and genuinely so, I think we can move better than what these people are doing. But they have been able to do that because of our own disorganization, our own confusion, our own greed, and our own um, unpatriotic ways of, of doing things. Let's um, go to the um, Pan-African Parliament and let's hear what uh, Honorable Okot Ogong is moving in the Pan-African Parliament. As feasibility studies have already been done, and we are now in the process of installing our refinery and also building a line, a pipeline that would evacuate oil from, our, from Uganda up to Tanga, which is at the seaport. Mr. President, in the process, recently the European Union Sorry. Parliament order. I happen to know that Tanga is in Tanzania. Yeah, so some may not know where Tanga is. Thank you. Mr. President, Tanga is a port on the coast of Tanzania. So the pipeline is going to be built from Uganda up to Tanga uh, a port to evacuate oil, crude oil that is uh, extracted from Uganda. Recently, uh, the European Union passed a resolution uh, stopping holding Uganda from uh, investing in uh, the refinery and also in the construction of the line. Their argument was that, Afri that Uganda, that in Uganda, the pipeline is going to pass in, in, in the forest reserve. That will disturb the peace of the elephants and animals. So in that case, Uganda should not do it because it's going to affect the peace of the, the animals in the forest. Uh, secondly, they were misinformed that the people's affected, uh, uh, project affected persons were not, uh, uh, were not uh, compensated. But from our record, all of them were uh, compensated and the country is in the process of resettling them and uh, compensating them promptly. So in this respect, they were also saying that the European Union should stop Uganda from doing it because it will affect the carbon emission. And I, I wonder, because uh, some of the countries emit more than 27%, but there are, there are no sanctions against them. For example, America emits more than 27% of green gas emission, but there is no sanction against those countries. Even in the European countries, their contribution to green gas emission is more than 26 percent, but there is no sanction against them. They have never stopped them uh, from investing in fossil oil. And therefore, Mr. Mr. President, we want the, to appeal to this parliament to come to our support, to support Africa's development, because this is not only on, Afri on Uganda. This is covering the entire Africa. They don't want us to invest in green gas, and yet this investment can change the lives of our people. For example, we are going to get billions of dollars, and this money can be invested in education, 
be invested in the research, be invested in the uh, infrastructure development, and it will improve the livelihood of our people. And this project being stopped, it will affect the development and the process of empowering our own people. And therefore, I want to appeal to the, to the entire parliament to give us the uh, support and allow Uganda to proceed with the extraction of our, our oil and gas. I beg to move, uh, Mr. President. And I think that is what um, matters to us as the people of Uganda, but of course as the people of Africa, because if that is not done, then we shall continue relying on these guys. And you know, that they are already now uh, scampering for whichever energy that they can, they can, they can, can lay hands on, including the dangerous um, coal which, which they, are, they, they are using. So I, I think if we move that way, that the, the, the African parliament can sit down and take a decision on that. But also the, 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 the African Union, not only the, that parliament, but also the general African Union having issues, protecting issues that concern its citizens of this continent, I think will be able um, to move. We shall hear more of the debate later on um, or, or about the, the resolution, including that um, they escalated further to the UN um, and the, uh, telling um, whoever uh, needs to know that I think this is high time that Africa needs to do its things with s support uh, more than uh, opposition that we are getting from the rest of the world. Uh, Munduguru Garama, your take on that? Uh, <coughs> thank you once again. You see, these are some of the things that uh, Disturb, uh, disturb me. The imperialist, the imperialist agenda is to make sure that permanently fragmented and kept in a disunited mood. When that happens, the little small countries which uh, Osejefo, Dr. Kwame Kuruma was uh, campaigning to dismantle and, and build a block called uh, Africa as United States of Africa then in 1963 when the imperialist achieves the agenda of keeping us in that state big projects like uh, making the oil the refinery, construction of a refinery, moving the, 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 the also the construction of the of the pipeline, the increasing the job uh, availability on the African continent and in Uganda to start with, limiting the opportunities of industrialization, is the agenda that is purely the imperialist agenda. When that is allowed to be realized here on the African continent, the true independence which our forefathers, and if you like our foremothers, were fighting for in 1963 and be, be, uh, uh, slightly uh, before, is going not to be achieved. That's why Honorable uh, Okot Ogon his uh, appeal is, is, is as relevant, timely, as it is brilliant and on point. The African continent must unite to fight the unfavorable trading and development policies that are imposed upon her by the imperialist who is, whose agenda and interest is to make sure that when we are kept in the state in which we have been from time immemorial, we shall be vulnerable and able to be manipulated because we are smaller and we don't have a single voice. 
Yeah, viewer, um, we thank you for uh, being with us um, until this time and still continuing with this program. But we have just received now uh, breaking news, uh, bad news rather, as you could be seeing on the screen, that the passing out away of the former leader of the Democratic Party in Uganda, Paul Kawanga Semo Kerere. The information is that the uh, Paul Kawanga Semogerere has died at the age of 19. Is the information that's coming in now. And we are really very sorry for the family and all the fraternity of the Democratic Party, but also the people of Uganda. Because Kawanga Semogerere has been a national figure, has been in government of Uganda, has led the Democratic Party and also other organizations and agencies in this country. Maybe also to add that uh, he is uh, what uh, Honorable Chairman uh, Nobat Mao has just done. He, 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 Nobat Mao is not the first to come from DP and uh, that joined the, the ruling government. Paul Kawanga Semo Gerere came from DP and he was a minister in NRM. Therefore, there are some of these compromises which uh, politicians who are mature uh, have got to make for the benefit of the country. And uh, I credit him. I also thank uh, God for his life because uh, at 90, when our life expectancy here is something like 56, uh, I think God really... And, and uh, the recent uh, picture which came out where he was having uh, Rubongoya and uh, and 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 uh, uh, the the uh, Bob Wine, the president of NOP, he didn't look that bad, but uh, you know God's ways are not our ways. May his soul uh, rest in eternal peace. We condole, of course, uh, uh, with the family, and uh, we hope that uh, the government and uh, the other agencies. Uh, are going to give him a defeating barrier. We shall, history will always uh, remember him. Yeah, of course, the UDC will continue giving uh, you more details um, about um, the other arrangements of um, what happens and until the, the barrier. Uh, in the meantime, the information we have is that he has um, passed away at the age of 90. And look, like you said, he's one of those uh, politicians who, for the sake and for the good of this country, had to make uh, uh, concessions here with the ruling um, government and was a minister in this government. So DP um, being part of this government is not a new thing. It is historical. That uh, and Kawanga Smogere, when he became um, the, the the minister um, uh, in, in in the in the government, also took um, a position that was very. Uh, crucial, especially at, at that time. So I think his, his death is robbing, and again, Uganda of another seasoned politician, but also a person who could tell you uh, his mind um, without uh, fear of contradictions, and mm -hmm. we, shall, we shall miss him. Tagali, you have something to say about um, Jose, um Kawanga Semongerere? I think for, him, for me what's, what stands out the most concerning uh, this particular gentleman was his dignified um, way of doing things. Mm -hmm. He was extremely dignified. He was e extremely um, polite and civil. Uh, that is miles apart from where we are at this time, when uh, people believe that uh, to be a political leader of repute, you must insult others and yes. you, you must really uh, be more uh, fraudulent than others. And it's a competition of evil behavior, unfortunately. Uh, this is a man who thought that he could propel his political ideas and beliefs without having to smear his neighbor, without having to, to lie and to cheat. And he maintained that on the public stage for very many years, over 50 mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the independence era, he was somewhere in the background of DP. And um, he held steady. Uh, th through the, the subsequent governments, not necessarily in the same capacity, but still a political actor. And he was very conscious, I think, 
that one needs to preserve a, a legacy that is positive and uh, inspirational, even to others who do not believe as you do. So we salute him for having maintained that high ground these many years. Mm. Yeah, he was a dignified uh, politician, a leader, and also I think of course he was also um, a very strong um, uh, Catholic Christian uh, in that faith because he also held a number of positions uh, in the church. So uh, is, Probably is maybe also, Mututa, if you will allow me just a second, to add, if we are to go by the uh, history, the historical account of the politics in Uganda, uh, to add also that uh, he, he, could, he could have been uh, the president of Uganda had he not been cheated. If we are to go by what uh, historical rumor has always carried that uh, he, he was rigged out. That is another thing. Then uh, also, he had a sharp eye for identifying uh, very good uh, young tax, but, but, political but, tax, exactly. like Chanjo. Yeah. Chanjo was uh, a product of uh, Kawanga Semugere, and I want to believe that uh, the, 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 the illness that is eating uh, uh, Chanjo up, notwithstanding, he was one of those uh, lethal uh, political uh, bandits that uh, have graced the political scene of Uganda. So that, that to me is the brain and the handwork of, of the man we have just lost. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was a very seasonal. And also maybe to, to, he gives us the example that we need to care for our lives because uh, he's a man who is to mind what he ate and also he minded so much uh, about uh, going through physical exercises. I, I do not want to, you know, sometimes we burden God a lot. At the end of the day, we are aware that he's the one who does everything. But uh, we must also do our part as human beings. And I think partly uh, it is the, the discipline that Mzei uh, Kawanga Semogre had that contributed to his long life. Then God did the rest. Sure. Uh. Yeah, we will be uh, missing him. Uh, but to also condone with the family and the rest of the of Ugandans upon the demise of uh, this great um, politician. We will be going for a break and when we come back we will continue with the African continental free trade area and more all, all the discussions are going to be uh, centered on that topic. Don't go away. Shortly we will be back with you. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. Network. One-on-one with Michael Jordan Lukumwa. A weekly face-to-face -face conversation focusing on accountability, inspiration, information, and sensitization of the public from the various sources, such as inspirational profiles. Having a disability is not inability. Professional guidance. There is no special antiretroviral uh, therapy that, that is given specifically for, for discord and what? A couple. And of course, politics. Don't you see anywhere that you would give a credit in the fight against COVID? My role 
as the owner of the country is not to, you know, be preoccupied by giving credit to my server. We have said that if we are to talk to uh, Genome 70, there must be certain conditions in place. Is it true that you paid 5 million shillings to MPs that voted for Anita Mong and Tayebo? That is laughable. Why would we pay when we have nominated them as SEC? The Tauri Party has been represented in Uganda's parliament for 10 years. We only By one MP, you yourself. And my daughter, Susan. <laughs> Every Friday, 9 p.m., it's one on one with Michael Jordan Lukomwa on UBC TV, inspiring Uganda. Yeah, welcome back to this Friday, Pan-African Friday, where we look at issues that affect us and concern us as the people of the continent, the leadership, the politics in it, the economics in it, the whichever issues that really um, concern us as the people of the continent. And today, we are taking off time to look at the African Continental Free Trade Area. It's one of the flagship uh, projects of the African Union aimed at bringing the co continent together in terms of trade and also raising awareness that Africans, as Africans, we need to do a lot of business together. As we speak, I think Africa is the lowest when it comes to economics in doing business together compared to the Americas, compared to the to, to, to Europe and other Asia and other parts of the world. In other words, we are doing business with the rest of the world, but we are not doing business within ourselves. We can trade so much with the outside world, but we are not doing uh, business within um, us. I think, to be specific, inter-trade Africa, I mean, inter-trade business within Africa stands at miserable 16 or so percent. It is below 15, actually. Yes, compared to, to Europe, compared to Asia, and compared to the Americans. So, what does that mean to us? And I think we'll have to listen what, first of all, what the African continent of free trade is and what it means to us. Well, I think we have that material. Let's um, see that, then we'll continue from there. Africa currently consists of 55 fragmented markets, markets that are also amongst the fastest growing economies in the world. Yet trade within the continent is the lowest globally. Africa does more trade with those outside its continental borders than with its neighbours. But this is about to change. An agreement on the African Continental Free Trade Area was signed in March 2018 and is expected to increase the share of intra-African trade by up to 50% between 2020 and 2040 liberalize services and tackle other barriers to intra-African trade. So what are the tangible benefits? 
When fully operational, the AFCFTA will bring together 1.2 billion people with a combined gross domestic product of more than $3 trillion, representing the biggest trade deal since the formation of the WTO, covering not only trading goods, services, investment, intellectual property rights, and competition policy. The agreement is expected to benefit small and medium-sized businesses, which are responsible for more than 80% of Africa's employment and 50% of its GDP. ECA has been working with its partners to support and prepare countries for putting the agreement into practice. This means setting up platforms for dialogue and national regional events for discussion on the AFCFTA, supporting the African Union member states in developing national strategies to ensure countries can implement the AFCFTA considering the characteristics of their own markets, Developing an AFCFTA Country Business Index, which will monitor and evaluate the implementation of the agreement for business. In addition to business, also mitigating the challenges, like ensuring the gender and youth-sensitive implementation of the AFCFTA, as well as mobilizing financial resources for implementation. The AFCFTA is an African solution for supporting industrial development, creating new business opportunities, generating jobs and reducing poverty. Yeah, so we are looking at all this uh, in one place. And that one place, one program, one project is the African continent of free trade area. In which case then we'll have to go down to look at how does country A do business with the country. The last time we were talking here and we said we are in, even within the East African bloc alone, you realize that Uganda, yes, they had that um, uh, Uganda now is, is planning to have free entry into the UK market. And the, I think Lord Puppet was here um, uh, uh, discussing that. Say, but like we were saying, when you do that, it's, it's very positive. It means that Ugandans will be able to access this market easy. But besides that, what about then the region? Because you remember Kenya was also doing, pushing the same f f with its avocados and the, with this nonsense and, and whatever. So uh, are we still look going micro? Are we planning um, as, as an entity? But of course, that also comes with a lot of uh, challenges as, 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 um, as, as a population, especially on the African continent. The issues of, of, of policies, um, state from state, the issues of um, infrastructure, uh, issues of uh, education, issues of, uh, of, of, of language. Now you come to issues of, uh, of, of, of the currency. How do we trade between Uganda and Nigeria, uh, between uh, Ghana and and, 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 and Sudan. So these are the issues that um, um, the uh, uh, African free trade area is trying to, 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 to address. But do we see this happening? Do we see this achievable? Do we look at this as, 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 as happening uh, within our lifetime? Do we see this benefiting the population of Africa and uh, especially now uh, the the, the, the southern part of, of, of the Sahara uh, Desert. Uh, when, uh, let us, uh, thank you so much, uh, Comrade Mututa. Uh, let, let me start with what you have just uh, said. Do we, do we see this? Do we, uh, the, this Africa continental free trade area, do we see it uh, being realized in our lifetime? That's a very uh, important uh, question. Now, the problem which we have had as uh, a society, and the African society in particular, because I don't want to speak for others, I'm an African and uh, I have observed this on the African continent, is to want to start something that directly benefits you and must benefit you now. The, 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 looking into the future and wanting to start a project to benefit another generation is what has been missing sure. on the African continent. The few people we had who were thinking in that 
line were not many indeed and uh, majority of them were identified by the enemy and they were eliminated yeah and so their vision died more or less died exactly the, the, the rest of the people who wanted to carry it uh, on uh, either didn't have the platform or the zeal and the energy those that have managed in some way to carry on the vision they have also been limited by the global imperialistic forces now what is important here is the is, is is this the africa continental free trade area was conceived by god's grace uh, going through the wisdom that was bestowed upon our leaders leaders of the african uh, heads of uh, states uh, in uh, addis around uh, uh, 2012 and this was in a way to answer the long-haired question, how can Africa salvage herself from the shackles of the economic also partly to answer the question that was posed and the appeal that was made by the great leaders the likes of Osejefo, Dr. Kwame Kuruma then, and uh, his uh, partners in 1963, that let us not live here without one army, without one continent together, without one currency, because, and, and, and without that self-determination that we are a block that works together and achieves together, of course, he didn't succeed. As we all know, the Casablanca group then failed, and we came up with a, a loose uh, coalition in the name of Organization of African Union. Mm -hmm. The Monorovia group won, and uh, the rest, like we say, is history. Sure. What is critical, though, is that even the centering of the headquarters of African Union in Addis was also a political and visionary act exactly. on the part of the Casablanca group, especially the chief priest of Sejefo Kwame Kuruma, because the emperor then had been persuaded to jump ship. But now that we have got the Africa continental free trade area established, uh, it was a bit delayed, in uh, 2018 March, that's when it was launched. Uh, and um, in, 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 in Accra is very good news because Ghana has Pan-Africanism and we hope that the opportunity they lost during the 1963 by the way they were even never proposed the countries that were proposed to host the head offices of the African uh, Organization of African uh, uh, Unity, Ghana was not there. Sure. But if you asked any progressive-minded person, because they would have said Osejefo uh, wants to have this thing as his personal property. Yes. So, but anybody would tell you, progressive-minded people would tell you that he should have taken on the headquarters. Now that we have got the secretariat, in uh, Accra, I think it is good news. What does it purpose to achieve? The Africa continental free trade area purposes to achieve the increase in intracontinental trade. Exactly. That we are able, country, be it the East Africa region, West Africa region, the North African region, they would call Maghreb. I don't know, Maghreb has got uh, various uh, definitions and uh, different groupings. And issues. But, uh, <laughs> let's just call it the Maghreb region, <laughs> the West African region, the East African region, can be able, and Central African region, can be able to trade uh, amongst themselves. It is purposes to achieve increased participation of women who are a big broke, but yet they are having small businesses which if you aggregate them, then they will constitute and document, they will constitute a very big percentage and block 
to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the African market. Its purpose is to achieve increased participation of youth because it is estimated that uh, in about um, in about uh, 10 or less even years we are going Africa is going to be the youngest continent now if you do not in your in your structuring uh, of, of bodies like uh, Africa free continental trade area encompass the youth then you would have made a mistake now our people in, uh, in there made sure that uh, the youth are an important component in as far as this uh, is concerned. Uh, they, apart from that, they realized that also Africa has been having a problem of having very small percentage of less than 15% trading amongst herself. Meaning, therefore, like you are observing, I listened to you carefully, that we do a lot of trading with the rest of the world, but not amongst ourselves. I want to propose that actually we don't do a lot of trading among, uh, with the rest of the world. The rest of the world does a lot of rooting from us. We donate to them. And we forget anything to do with trading amongst ourselves. Two, the Africa continental free trade area also purposes, not to actually have mentioned so many things there. Uh, uh, the other observation that uh, this very uh, body uh, purposes to achieve is to do away with the hindrances, the tariff and non-tariff barriers to trading amongst ourselves. We are also um, looking at this uh, whereby the the, the issue of uh, uh, currency, you mentioned the yes, currency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have had a problem of, even if we wanted to trade amongst ourselves, like the European Union. And, 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 and maybe this also should also answer what you posed. Will it be achieved in our lifetime? The European Union that we have presently, it has taken her close, if my mathematics uh, allows me, Close to 72 years, I think. Sure. They are where they are now because they have had to work on this journey 72 years and they are still counting. They are not... Yeah, but still, they still have <laughs> issues. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They, they are not done. So, when you look at uh, the rate at which the Africa continental free trade area, for instance, has gotten... The results so far, you will know that we are headed for greater benefits. How? Almost everybody is on board. They have all come on board by way of ratifying the agreement. Yeah. Two, the domestication and working on, uh, on issues like uh, the, uh, the rules of uh, origin, because that is very critical. Uh, we cannot have the rules of origin whereby you have a hundred percent it would have loved it to have a hundred percent to know that these goods are actually from uganda and they are entering into nigeria they are trying to avoid the situations where like we have had you remember our sugar here uh, sugar comes from away from uh, east african region somehow the shrewd, because we are not short of those uh, crooks, they will import sugar from Brazil, they will brand it Uganda, they will put it somewhere, and then they will flood it onto the market. Now, this is what the Africa continental free trade area is trying by what they call the rules of origin, to make sure that they do not suffer that problem, because they would not have achieved what they purpose to achieve if they are not stringent and as far as that aspect is concerned. So in a way, therefore, uh, if they, we achieve like 90% or even 80 something percent, we shall be good to go. They will, they will just commence. Now, the other beauty about this is that um, they, are, they, they, they are saying we are commencing with those that have come on board.
they are not going to wait for everybody to come on yeah. board. Mm -hmm. Because the other time we were looking at uh, uh, this um, country, Eritrea. Our, our, our Eritrea, mm. who have not, uh, uh, have, have not played ball in uh, some of the aspects. But you see, uh, the, the, the benefits, if for instance the EYAKA, the East African community, was to wait for everybody, now they have seen the beauty within EYAKA, and then members, Somalia, are pride. More and they are exactly. going to be. The DRC was recently admitted. And the beauty also about the Africa continental free trade area is that it builds on the regional economic blocks which are in, 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 in place. Cases of Comesa, East African community, EYAKA, cases of uh, ECOWAS, cases of uh, uh, this, um, we have uh, Comesa, we have EYAKA, we have uh, uh, ECOWAS, we have uh, uh, these regional bodies that exactly. we are talking about, the SADAC, uh, SADAC. Uh, so the, the, we are not in competition. They, they structured it in such a way, because remember, the brain at Africa Free Continental, Continental Free Trade Area, majority of the brain there are the members that have been in the regional trade blocks. They, they just brought them to make sure that they play at uh, a bigger plane. Therefore, those who thought that there was competition between the Africa continental free, free trade area with the regional economic blocks are in for a shock because instead they complement each other. Sure. Now finally, we are talking about bringing together a continent of close to 1.3 billion people. I think we are now at 1.2 billion people. We are looking at uh, uh, an economy, uh, aggregated economy, African eco aggregated economy of close to GDP of close to uh, three trillion dollars. And remember, this is against this is against uh, the postulated estimates like uh, that DRC, for instance, when you take her potential under ground and on the top of the ground, she is about 33, 36 trillion dollars. Now that potential has not been tapped. So we are saying that aggregate, aggregately speaking, an economy like African uh, GDP, which is uh, at uh, three, uh, uh, trillion, three trillion dollars, can be bettered by far when we trade together. And the barriers that we have already known systematically, the systems including things like uh, convertibility, you know, currency convertibility, we have put in place uh, the uh, Pan-African uh, payment and settlement uh, scheme whereby the amount of money is that Africa used to lose in billions of dollars per year, <laughs> above five, uh, yeah. uh, is, 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 is now going to be in the past. That we, you can trade from Ghana, you can trade with a Kenyan, and it, there will be the, this Africix uh, Bank, which is uh, uh, doing that already. And the process is already piloted in about uh, six countries, and it is going to be rolled over. And this system is going to cut down completely on the issue of loss of income as a consequence of currency convertibility. So you can see, therefore, in a manner of speaking, you can see that, that this is the miracle we have been waiting for. We only need to give it our blessings. We only need to make sure that we are part. And the, 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 the concept of inclusive, inclusivity, that all the players must be brought on board. The youth, the women, and when you combine those two, you are getting well over 80% of the Africa's economy. 
and the structure of Africa continental free trade area is such that all those small businesses SMEs, yeah. are all brought on board. Now, when finally, because it is estimated that by 19, by 2035, we shall be there. Yeah, but issues of uh, financing, I think, also have to be looked at critically within that because if you are talking about the SMEs, which are definitely a bedrock of the businesses in Africa, uh, then you have to also address issues of um, access to reliable, finance. affordable finance. Because, like, uh, uh, it was We are going time. to recapitalize the Africa Development Bank. Yeah, because, but also the other question was who. Can Africa itself do that without having to go and beg someone to give money with conditions? Is it yes. possible even? Rachel? Uh, I think for me, I'd like to start where the question you had earlier. Uh, do we expect to see this in our lifetime? Uh, it can be a very prolonged thing, depending on the dynamics on the ground. Um, you may recall that the journey we find ourselves on, particularly as an East African community, was started about 130 years ago. Um, it is the British that first began on the common market concept uh, back in 1895, I believe. And they also went ahead to, to try and establish a monetary union. And that's why we have a shilling for three countries, uh, the East African countries. Uh, they also went ahead to try and establish a customs uh, union when at that time in the in the area of about the 1900s early when Uganda in particular uh, opted to become part of uh, a customs arrangement which would take care of the East African um, goods coming in uh, through Mombasa and of course we know that uh, when the leadership colonial leadership of Tanzania changed uh, when B Germany, that was the colonial master, until about 1918, and they, they were taken on by the British instead. Tanzania joined the post union in about 1922. I'm trying to say that this journey, the East African Union, or the proposed, is more than 100 years in the making, is really what I'm trying to say. And so there have been interruptions along the way, but I think the more important ones are our own. Uh, since the colonial master departed 60 years ago, we really have not made that much progress when it comes to uh, getting rid of the contradictions. Among them, uh, just like East African communities plagued by some important considerations such as uh, monetary barriers and currency barriers, customs barriers, uh, the situation is also true in ECOWAS. Of course, the length and breadth of the challenges vary from region to region. Um, for example, when you talk about the Maghreb Union, um, some of the more important considerations have been some of the political situations, including the latest uprising in, in Tunisia, and of course the, the drawbacks that Algeria suffered with conflict a number of years ago. But that same picture is true of East Africa today. Uh, after Uganda had sunk in a significant amount of money, to make sure that these, there are more roads to facilitate trade, we know what is pertaining at this time. Uh, the conflict has flared up once again. Sudan, Southern Sudan, is also not a stranger to conflict. And we also have these bandits that waylay uh, traders as they come back and forth. South Africa, the Sadek, Sadek bloc, is uh, saddled uh, with extreme inequalities. Um, we have a situation where more than 40% of Southern Africa is in abject poverty. And yet you have an economy like South Africa and Botswana that have made a lot of progress in terms of uh, economic development. So while African co continental free trade area is something that is designed to sit on the power of uh, regional blocks, it cannot make that much uh, progress in the short or medium term unless these contradictions are taken care of. Um, in the ECOWAS situation, we know, for example, that uh, 
these uh, currency regimes, most notably the CFR situation, where that is pegged, the currencies of those countries that are former colonial, uh, colonially uh, led by France, still have their currencies pegged to the euro. Uh, but there are also issues, among others, which include the fact that ECOWAS, for example, the, the, the GDP of ECOWAS is dominated by Nigeria, which contributes about 70%. That is a very huge percentage. Where does that leave these other actors? Um, and of course, when we talk about the GDP combined of Nigeria, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire, it's 83%. So what we are saying is that the balancing act that is required for Africa continental free trade area to take off and to realize the gains that they anticipate, we rely on how fast there is resolution of these contradictions within existing blocks. Sure. Um, for some of them, uh, of course, language is an issue. Uh, we know that uh, France is, French is very pronounced in, in West Africa. And then, of course, we have Nigeria, Ghana, and some others that are into English. But those have direct impacts on what kind of distance can be covered. But away from currency and away from customs and away from language, there is also the issue of things that have not been scrutinized. For example, if we are talking about free access of goods and services, there is also labor. Uh, I know for a fact that you cannot come from here and especially Tanzania, and say that you're offering your goods and services without a working permit. Mm. They will not also, allow it. That is also resolved in, uh, in the Africa continental free trade area. It is uh, the next stage. We are talking about resolution yes. of mm. ourselves, mm. because mm. we don't need act, uh, African continental free trade area for Tanzania to, to, to lift that no, particular exactly. barrier. Or, or to stop, stop or on the member states. Or, or, yeah. or, 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 yes. or, or stop Uganda eggs from accessing the yes. Kenya market. So while those things are still in place, it would be difficult for uh, African coordinator free trade area sure. to actually execute the vision they have seen with folks who already put up these barriers and they maintain. It should be like uh, Ruto said, bottom up. Which, which is also true. But also, there is an important one. I don't know very much about uh, ECOWAS or SADAC. But for East African community countries, there is the issue of multiple membership of economic blocks. How will we resolve members, I mean, uh, the issues of members, who are also members of COMESA, also members of SADAC, members of East African community? Tanzania is notorious for that. <laughs> but why? The elimination, anyway. the elimination uh, sister Richard, the elimination measures will come in there. The Dupurista, I can, of course, I hear you correctly. You are back at the boundary. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 your concern is very sincere and very genuine. But you see, the member states, for instance, having Tanzania as a member of SADAC, having her as a member of EYAKA, at the end of the day, whoever is going, whichever organization, whichever body is going to be providing the best uh, uh, of the benefits, is the one that is going to carry the day. But what is important also is that even with that duplicity, at the end of the day, we have got a big umbrella called the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Do you refer to themselves there? But you see, <laughs> you cannot say that the, and by the way, it's a wonderful concept. Yes. And the, the benefits as anticipated are, are glorious. But how will these people plug into this vision if the smaller vision is not coming it's to not, pass. That is the real okay. question. Okay. Let's hear mm. what the Secretary General of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area says um, about some of those internal uh, contradictions and the challenges that the FTA, FCTA um, is facing, uh, especially uh, as um, in the beginning. But most of this will be uh, sorted out. Uh, let's hear from the mm. Secretary General of the African Trade Area when he was talking to um, participants at the ODI uh, seminar in Europe. We have a, a significant challenge uh, on, on our continent. We have a uh, well-established uh, pattern of market fragmentation, smallness of national economies, lack of uh, industrial capacity, uh, of course, continued export of primary commodities uh, to of the north, 
And this uh, has contributed, in my view, to uh, all of these factors have contributed to intra-Africa trade being at a very, very low uh, 18%. If you compare with intra-EU trade, uh, of course, everybody knows it is over 70%. So we have, we are at the lower uh, end of uh, regional uh, integration. Uh, there is not a single economy in Africa that can survive on its own without the integration uh, and the creation of um, a, a, a viable market for trade and investment. Not Egypt, not South Africa, not Nigeria, not a single country. We have to look at the lessons of how the European Union became competitive globally. It is by consolidating the market and creating a single market. We have 1.3 billion people. Uh, today, uh, Africa's combined GDP is uh, about 3.4 trillion United States dollars. It is projected to be close to. However, if we continue on this path of fragmentation that we have been in for the last 60 years, that projection will remain nothing but a projection. Um, we will not see the benefits of a consolidated market. So the Assembly of Heads of States and government took note of this and in 2015 said uh, by the year uh, 2017, we must have a free trade area uh, in Africa. We now have uh, uh, 44 countries that are state parties to the agreement. Uh, only one country has not signed. And we had to uh, be innovative in how we were making progress in the middle of a pandemic uh, towards a the realization of a free trade area. So it has been a remarkable journey. AFCFTA is 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 a flagship project of the African Union, and it's probably the most successful of the the thirteen uh, flagship projects of the African Union, and that is because the heads of states themselves. Um, are directly uh, involved, they are hands-on. Uh, from here, I am going to Uganda to, pr to brief President Museveni. Uh, so uh, they are very much in the driving seat. It is not easy to have 55 bosses, <laughs> uh, but I, I, I have to report to all of them. Uh, and, and that's really, that's why we've made such a big difference, is because of the leadership uh, and the hands-on um, approach of our heads of states. So he is also raising a number of challenges, mm -hmm. the fragmentation of the markets within uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the continent, but also um, issues of uh, um, working as a team. Because, mm -hmm. th th like she put it at the beginning, that uh, some countries claim to be big economies. But big economy is doing what? Because you can also be big when you, you, you are doing big. One eyed man. Exactly, among the, among the blind. The blind. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 he's also raising, of course, see, he knows Nigeria uh, is a big uh, uh, economy or a big market <laughs> for others to sell their things. Um, we have uh, Egypt and a few others. But indeed, no single country in Africa can stand on its own than doing business with the rest. And the best way that Africa can now seem to be uh, focused than in, in the past, looking at what is good for the Africans. Of course, we have issues, um, countries have addressed issues of um, security, issues of, uh, of, 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 of um, uh, democracy, but all those can only be factored in well when issues of the economics, the money, when people have money, then the issues of security, issues of, of, of democracy, and these other things we're hearing can be addressed. Tagali, you are still on your point when we, we, we went to the Secretary General. Yes, uh, the point remains that uh, it's a good thing that is now continent, uh, that is moving around the continent, seeking uh, 
a unity of mind. Because in the past, like we said, when a country has commitment to three economic blocks, what, in what way can we have a meeting of the minds on the continent? If in the region where it is, it is plugged to whoever has a forum, uh, it really has to come to a place where this vision, this supervision, that is over and above the, the block visions, uh, is embraced by all as the spring, uh, spring block to, to wherever Africa needs to go. But also I think one of the things that um, I really don't hear much about is there's definitely a funding deficit. Who and how are we going to underwrite this vision? It is massive. Uh, I have not heard, for example, uh, the head of uh, ACFDA talking about maybe engaging or seeking uh, firm uh, commitments from these blocks, for example, maybe the Maghreb says, okay, we are going to put into that pocket 10 billion. Yeah, because at least for them, they have their own uh, monetary uh, agency. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe SADC is going to put 10 billion into that pot. Because otherwise, we, we return to where we came from, looking to the other people for financing. AU and uh, its predecessor, OAU, failed to make project progress because of that same issue. It's the same people who are looking closely to see that you don't move forward who are underwriting your course. Yeah, because that is very <laughs> crucial. Uh, and Ndugur Garama talked about it. The other time we were looking at um, the taz Tazara, the, the rail line between um, Tanzania and uh, Zambia. Zambia. Mm -hmm. And of course that line uh, goes down up to, to South Africa. But when you, you see the activities of Tazara now, the two countries cannot even buy a new wagon to run on that on that on that on that line they cannot even because since the 70 to something when that railway was put in place it was also flagship by which was uh, uh, given by by Mao then Zedong when he was still the, the president of uh, of, uh, of China. China up to today in fact there are some of the wagons that are still running on that line uh, uh, since then but the two governments cannot sit together say let's improve this and then we can do when we are talking business if you cannot sit because this a, a line which is bringing money it's not for free, but it's also facilitating activities between the two countries. And in fact, that line, if it were well looked after, it could continue up to the rest of Africa, up to, 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 to North Africa. But so the issues of funding have to be looked at very well in this, uh, in this project. And I think later on, we shall uh, he, uh, hear um, uh, about the funding gap uh, in the activities of, uh, F, of F, uh, CTA. But that notwithstanding, like I said, I think we need to have somewhere where we can start. True. And yes, the willpower is there and the energy. I think uh, more than anything else, I think the, the African nations now realize more than before that if anyone who seeks to go it alone will surely die out. But you remember the other issue again about funding is um, when, when uh, um, President Gaddafi was killed, one of the reasons as to why he was eliminated was because of the, the, the gold currency that he wanted to introduce. And, for and also a commitment to underwriting this cause. Exactly. But you remember that the, the, the French had already started with the eco currency in, in West Africa. Mm -hmm. And the eco currency was their brainchild. And the, actually the guarantors of the eco currency was the central bank of, of France. Ironically, that's what I, I, it was. But um, Gaddafi had wanted that something different, something which is um, purely African. And with the, 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 the gold diner, it was going to be a game changer that we could still raise more money as Africans to borrow and do our own activities, trading in a single currency without necessarily have to look to the West. And that is what the problem. Unfortunately, um, not much is talked about in the, in the, in the African trade, trade areas of now, but I think one of the future prospects is that the African um, continent needs to have a single currency that will facilitate its trading um, on the continent. Otherwise, if we are left the way we are now, it means we shall still 
have again problems of uh, of of, of com combating much as we have the the tools in place that can also now help to do the trading within the blocks and the countries within Africa. But it's something that needs to be addressed. Do you think, uh, Rugarama, that this will be faster than thought? Uh, I have had an opportunity to read the paper that was presented by senior comrade, uh, the patron of the Pan-African movement and uh, the president of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, to African Union for later on a peer review titled The Bottlenecks of Africa to serve for economic uh, independence and um, one the 11 uh, bottlenecks that uh, he argues out and um, he points out uh, for purposes of my submission right now I will point out the fragmented markets and um, I say so because you also uh, talked about it just a few minutes ago. The fragmented markets is one of the bottlenecks that uh, has bedeviled the African continent for a very long time. And uh, these fragmented markets are not coordinated by way of uh, infrastructure. The development of the infrastructure and uh, uh, Sister Rachel here was talking about uh, rug, the rugs on uh, in in our, in our different parts of this continent whereby if you for instance you are moving goods uh, from Uganda just recently up to uh, uh, Khartoum or just down here in uh, in South Sudan you would have uh, they would uh, they would be escorted you can imagine the cost of, of, of trading you have to escort because of insecurity that is another uh, bottleneck that uh, the president uh, the, of Uganda pointed out. The insecurity, the underdeveloped infrastructure, the in terms of roads, in terms of uh, electricity, in terms of uh, telecommunications. Then we have got uh, the markets that are inaccessible in that manner, therefore. And um, this is partly what the Africa continental free trade area purposes to address. address. They are saying that you cannot subject a market of close to 1.3 billion people. You subject that market to the humes of the foreign interests. The idea is that we can have these 3.5 million people uh, whose total GDP is uh, like the Secretary General was saying the, 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 the trade, the trading uh, comes to close uh, 3.5 trillion dollars and you subject it to how uh, and when the foreigners would wish to give us whatever they want to give us. The idea is that when we increase, because you see, what the problem we have, uh, we have had for a very long time is not to appreciate this part of history that Africa has been trading among itself even before the, the slave trade mm. even before the slave trade came in Africa there is abundant historical evidence pointing to the effect that Africa has been trading among herself across uh, the, 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 the geographical bo bo borders including the, the ocean uh, on land and uh, things like uh, gold, things like ivory, things like timber, things like all that. But you see, the connectivity has been an issue. That now in the fourth industrial revolution, we are unable to move goods. And this has been seen where we have got plenty in terms of, uh, say, uh, food security. We've got plenty in one region, even in, 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 in specific African countries, that there is plenty in the west part of the, of the country, but people in Karamoja are starving and they are dying. We have seen that. Problem, leadership, and also connectivity, ability to move and deliver 
what is lacking the other side. The same thing appears. And when you look at uh, Africa continental free trade area, they are, they are now at a stage whereby they are developing and consolidating what they call customs union, custom union. Mm. There is a way that they have developed the number of them. They are some were already there. They are just trying to galvanize them and make sure that they, 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 they are operational. And um, these are centers, you know, centers whereby you say we are going to use this center for purposes of increasing uh, intra-trade uh, amongst uh, the African uh, uh, members and also to make sure that uh, the infrastructure, because the issue you raised and uh, I think Rich also talked about it, was that okay, this is wonderful now, but where are we going to get the finances? I have had opportunity again to look at uh, the proposals that uh, have, have been made uh, at uh, the Secretariat in, 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 in Ghana, whereby the Secretary General is looking uh, at, uh, and his team, they are looking at bringing on board the diaspora. They are saying that the diaspora, who are aware of African, of the African uh, descent, they are aware of uh, 200 uh, million. And they are saying the 200 million people, the estimate, the estimate is that they are, they are in uh, uh, some trillion of, of, of dollars, uh, the, the, the amount of money per annum, that if they can tap into that diaspora and uh, they come and invest in uh, Africa Development Bank, I was telling you the last time, that the percentage, investment percentage of the African countries in their own bank, where we are supposed the individual African countries are supposed to go and borrow, is less than 15%. Yeah. It is countries like ja Japan, countries like Germany, the, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, North, Af North America, that are heavily investing, and Brazil are heavily investing in our own bank. Now, uh, under whose terms? So we shall be running from uh, a bush uh, to, 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 to run away from uh, rain and entering uh, an unroofed house if we continue with that trend. Sure. But the, the, the suggestion, you can see that the suggestion is very welcome and also the move that uh, the, the body is making to reach out to the diaspora, and we have seen what the diaspora can do. Even the Bible is very clear about people uh, who, who were once uh, members of a certain community, and they had to be called back in order for that particular community to, 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 to develop. In the same manner, when we tap into the diaspora, we encourage them to come and invest in the East African, I mean in the African Development Bank, which I'm sure they are going to do. Then we shall be having the issue, the funding gap that uh, we have raised here as a very big concern. And the Secretary General was also raising it, but he was optimistic already. Sure. Then we have got genuine partners. You see, everybody is selfish. You, Comrade Mututa, here has already said that let us not blame the imperialists. They have got their interest to look after. Yeah. What, what are we doing ourselves? Oh, so in, in this particular journey, we have had the African Union, and particularly the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, partnering with uh, China. It's a very specific uh, uh, agreement. You need to look at it. And it, it is beautiful. When you look at it, you love what is contained in there. And I'm very sure the brain power that we have now at that secretariat they are going to see through this thing. Now we have got people like uh, the heads of state, the bosses we, the Secretary General was talking about. Every head of state on the African continent, more than ever before, is committed to realizing the achieve the, 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 the is committed to the realization of having this uh, Africa continental free trade area become a reality. So we are sure. Sure. And for me, I have no problem I, partnering with any um, of, 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 of these blocks, of these countries, provided that we also have um, uh, 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 what, what we intend to do. 
the problem has been that the micro, those, those the fragmented markets, then the, the, the micros that w the, you give you give money, this one, do that. Do th but if this money is given in a lump sum at uh, um, uh, 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 apex of the organization, I think it will help us. We, we will not refuse taking money from Americans. We will, re will not refuse taking money from the Europeans. Because as long as that money is meant for our own benefit. If you are not going to give us with the conditions that when you are praying this time, we have to face the East or face the West. Th so that part partnerships will be very crucial um, for Africa as it uh, moves into the, the next uh, stage. The, the problem has been that when you, you are dealing at a, a micro level, it, it becomes a, a problem because we borrow, 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 borrow. The other time I had um, uh, President Ruto was saying that they are no longer going to get engage in any borrowing as long as that borrowing interest is more than 10% period, they would rather not, not borrow. But like um, um, Ambassador uh, Chikomb last time was saying, the Americans who have money are borrowing at 2, 3 percent, 5 percent. For Africa, you are borrowing at it's all five that. Five and above. So for those who have money, the, uh, those, those who don't need it are even being convinced to, to borrow it at the, the cheapest. For us who need it, we are being told to, and they say we are poor. So wh wh where is the, the rationale here? But if there is that borrowing that we can undertake and which is uh, very affordable and which is uh, friendly to the people of Africa, I think we should be able to do it in a partnership that is also respectful to our cultures, to our values and our, our, our plans. Uh, I think also there is another component that uh, I really have not had uh, much concerning. But I also think it will be a very important spring, springboard to where AC, FTA needs to go. And that is the issue of uh, women empowerment. Uh, we all, it is, it is fact that 70% uh, of cross-border trade, informal that is, is uh, an enterprise of women. But these women are disproportionately disadvantaged because their businesses stagnate at micro and small business uh, in size, on account of the fact that they rarely have the collateral to secure the formal capital. So we have, I have not heard how this very important contributor to cross-border trade, because we also know that 90% of all trade in Africa, uh, intra-trade that is, is uh, SMEs. Uh, it's a it's a, an undertaking of SMEs. So mm, and if also having lost a lot and still trading in agricultural produce here. Yeah. So mm. if that is the engine of economic growth in the short term, I have not heard how they will cater to SMEs, how women will be helped to enter the formal sector because most of their trade is informal because of the the disadvantages that surround uh, gender issues. Yeah. Once that one is taken care of, I think we'll really be moving. Yeah, I think it was addressed last time. So it is. When we were in Tanzania, mm. it was basically the issue of women and youth in business mm. under the AFC um, TA. And it was well articulated, and um, uh, because we didn't have time. But we, 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 it is uh, one of the areas of focus uh, because this SMEs are mainly women and youth who are doing business across the borders, and for them, they are not they, we, even without the 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 instruments up, they are already doing business. So I, I think women and youth are um, part of the groups that are allocated for under the the, the free uh, trade area. Given and, special care. Yes, and, and I think it's, it's for the purpose that knowing that they are the biggest um, uh, part, uh, tr traders um, under that other than the Dangotes of this group, of this uh, uh, team, I think the SM is mainly uh, cater for women and youth who are the back bed bedrock of the, the SM, is, uh, especially in the continent uh, in Africa. Viewer, we have um, been with you all this long and we wish we could be with you even beyond now, but we have to go because other programs are coming on board and we encourage you to continue uh, watching uh, UBC uh, for the more programs that are, are coming. But we'll be with you uh, next week again on Friday to look at more issues that concern the people of Africa, the continent of Africa, and we'll also encourage you to always uh, be with us. We'll also soon be uh, giving you 
uh, time also to participate um, uh, live here in studio but also um, in other platforms where we can interact for now we thank you so much being with us and we appreciate uh, your uh, viewing of UBC and we ask you continue uh, watching um, UBC for more upcoming programs and thank you so much.